So should we get started? Sure. Okay. Um, searching for speakers or listeners for Ukrainian conferences. Whose item is this? Uh, okay, maybe they'll join later. Uh, we can get back to this. Uh, Kafka support status? Whose item is this? Someone asked John Miller. Uh, that's me, uh, Greg Anson. Uh, I work with uh, IBM and Istio. Yep. Um, and just we're trying to integrate with a Kafka deployment that is limited to uh, SASL SSL for uh, the authentication. And in our attempts to communicate uh, through Envoy to like a broker for sending and receiving messages, uh, we're getting a HPE invalid method in the Envoy access logs. I was wondering if that was related to any of the work that's ongoing with the Kafka support. I know there's a pull request and an item tracking the work. Yeah, there's uh, there's no Kafka support in Envoy today. So there's no SASL support. There's there's nothing. Um, okay. So uh, you know, if that's interesting to you, I would I would recommend hop hopping in and potentially helping out. Um, I think we have a good plan forward um uh, of how to how to move that pr forward i don't know what the timeline and status is mm -hmm. but uh we're at the point now where we've gone through a bunch of iterations uh the kafka folks have nicely just uh they, they have like a json version of their protocol so that we can auto generate the various classes so so things are better now um so I'm hoping in the next month or so we can get something basic merged there. I don't know that that's going to do SASL though. So someone would have to come in and do that later. Okay. Well, no, that's great. Uh, it just means that, yeah, that's the PR that I should be watching and uh, possibly the, the person I should be badgering uh, regarding uh, SASL support, but no, thanks. That's uh, that answers my question. So. Okay. Cool. And if it's an HPE error, does that mean they may have accidentally configured HTTP one? Uh, um, yeah, that is the the one error that I'm seeing is dispatch error HTTP one dot one protocol error HPE invalid method. Mm. Okay. Uh, and the app when I'm trying to attempt to uh, connect through Envoy, I'm getting a basically a response of unknown protocol for SASL underscore SSL. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. No. I mean, that's that's because we just don't. I mean, we just don't support it. So yeah. you'll you'll have to either use raw TCP to go through Envoy, um, or someone will have to come in and implement SASL support. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi. This is Lynn. Uh, the reason we are kind of asking this is uh, it's interesting. We actually find a, a blog, uh, probably more than one blog out there, that people actually using um, GKE and then they were using uh, Kafka. I think they were using Confluence as an example. So they were able to create service entry to access uh, Confluence, which runs outside of the mesh, and then use service entry. And I believe they were using TLS protocol um, as part of their service entry. So I was, so uh, we we know uh, Envoy doesn't support SASE, but I, I guess we were trying to understand what if we config um, to use uh, TLS to access uh, Kafka, which is external of the mesh. Uh, would Envoy just to allow the communication? Uh, why would people actually get it working on the blog? So those are the questions we have. We understand you won't get any of the intelligent like routing or logging metrics feature of Envoy, yeah. but Envoy, basic connectivity. Envoy can TCP proxy. Right. Um, here, uh, I would recommend um, if there's Kafka questions, like I, I don't know that anyone on this call is going to have more info than what we just said, but I'm happy to start a communication with people at Confluent. So if, if you want to know more, could you just send me an email um, and, and I, can, I can introduce you to people at Confluent? Yeah, that would be great. Maybe reach out to you on Twitter. Would that be the best way, Matt? 
uh, or my email, mkline at lift.com. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, just to make sure we, uh, so you said if we access through TCP and uh, uh, TLS, that would be okay, just nothing specific to the SASE protocol, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, next issue. Um, this is one that Lee said we might want to discuss. I don't know if he's on the call. Yeah, he is. Um, we need to. Uh, bump um, our use of autoconf uh, to fix some snafu, which is as a result of this layering of technical debt, which comes from this CMake external stuff. Um, basically, we're trying to pass down flags for things like sanitizers in the environment, which have actually, now that we're doing that, they've started to actually cause our external dependencies to build with sanitizers, which is a good thing, you would think, but Turns out some of the auto tools, auto conf stuff doesn't work very well with um, ASAN, at least with earlier versions. And so we need to bump this. And then that's led us down the rabbit hole of, do we do this uh, by bumping the CI image? Do we generate just the configure script and, um, and just check that in? And maybe it sounds like if we don't want to bump to 1804 we should just generate the configure script and i think that will fix it assuming that uh, there's no other um as, assuming it's in the actual generation that the bug was fixed then i think that's all good so, well i i don't have the full track of where all the configs used is that only gperf tools uh probably i mean <laughs> like we're now down to like but, two uh, build recipes. There's LuaJIT and GPerf tools, and LuaJIT is its own weird make monstrosity. So I think it's just yeah. GPerf tools. Okay, then G GPerf tools. Um, so we recently bumped the GPerf tools to some master commit instead of release 2.7 to support the PPC um, architecture. I think that by Chris uh, Christopher. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. So that one doesn't, so the master commit doesn't have generated configure script, so we have to run autoconf since that PR. I see, so that was a new introduction and we didn't used to do that. Yeah, we didn't used to do that when, when we were on the released version. And is, so just to get, you know, right, the essential model is that autoconf generates the configure script. Does it rely on anything in the environment while doing so, or is it really a hermetic? Yeah, auto <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't rely on the environment since it generates a configure script to detect the environment stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that that makes sense. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't make sense. Auto depends on environment. Okay, well, I try to bump to eighteen oh four anyway, and uh, it fails in spectacular ways. So mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of tempted to then just go down the path of checking in the script as you suggested. Yeah, uh, I think that would work. Um, yeah, and that's probably easiest way at this point. I think bump to 18.4 uh, is too heavy for the community at this point. We, we, yeah. we might eventually to do the upgrade, but yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, one one thing we could probably do, I don't know if it's worth the effort, uh -huh. is we we could make two build images, one sixteen and one eighteen, and just use the eighteen one just for the ASAM build. Um, and that, you know, I, I'm not sure that that's worth it. The other thing that uh, uh, occurred to me, and I mean, wouldn't it be less effort just to make G perf tools work with Bazel? <laughs> like I, 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 I mean, well, I have a thread about that internally. Uh, the maintainer of that doesn't believe in Basil, to be honest. Um, so um, that that was his response. Uh, so I mean, I, 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 I what can I do? <laughs> don't, don't, don't you? I mean, don't you have some like Google camp that you can send this person to that that can like uh, fix no, him uh, or something? I don't. That, know. That, that's not the way things work at Google. People disagree. They just disagree. It turns out. <laughs> Is that a gulag joke, Matt? Yes. Yes. yes exactly. Can we not just add a basal political file to Uh John Miller didn't try to write that, and he said it, it, it 
to fight even his skills and he's like a basil ninja so i'm not <coughs> going to try and <laughs> do it okay that, 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 that's fine I, yeah right yeah uh, harvey did you get any uh answer to like when there would be an actual release of gperf tools like soonish i don't know if i asked that one I, I, I yeah it's been almost a year uh, since the last one yeah we uh, if you can ask them when the, in the next release probably that will be I mean, yeah there is one promising <coughs> development and that is abseil might get tc might include tc mark in the future so that'll mm -hmm. remove like part of our coupling to GPerf tools. I think we still rely on it. <coughs> Do we still rely on it for anything else? Like I mean, probably for profiling and so on, but we could always make that an optional thing, right? Yeah, yeah. we we use it for uh, CPU. Well, I, I mean, the thing I, I I've always found that the GPerf tool CPU profiler doesn't work very well for me, so I always use Perf. But yeah. but the heat profiler does work quite well. I, I think the CPU profiler probably related to the stack unwinding issue that I found uh, that that the bug we have since we don't we don't modify the system library to have the frame pointer <laughs> we don't do that but the enable frame pointer ex expects you have the all I see. dependency to down to libc have frame pointer enabled. Got it. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's mostly, I just never looked into it because perf works so well that mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, don't, I don't see the point. Yeah. Okay, um, cool. So I think that we, we know where to go with that one. Um, uh, Envoy usage platform survey. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we keep talking about things like, can we update to Ubuntu 18 or uh, mm -hmm. like, can we move to C++ 17? So one thing that occurred to me uh, is maybe, you know, every six months or something like that, we could send out some type of survey just mm -hmm. to understand, you know, what, what OSs are people deploying on? What compilers do they have access to? We could ask them, like, do you have access to a version of GCC or Clang greater than X? Um, mm -hmm. and, and I feel like that would help us make much more educated decisions about mm -hmm. can we drop X compiler? Because right now, I, I think we have absolutely no idea about what we can do. There. That, that, that's good, although, uh... You know, how do we get people to actually respond? <laughs> but yeah. No, we can. I, I mean, but but I, I don't know, like as long as the usage was anonymized and we don't ask yeah, them yeah. To access like like where they work or whatever. Um, I mean, we can just send it to Envoy Announce and Envoy users and yeah, it won't be perfect, but it's probably better than nothing. Yeah. I, I bet you when you said if you, if you had CNCF drive it and they have like social media and like they can like repeat it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we can do social media. We can yeah. send it out on the well, email. Let's do the nagging so that we don't have to do it. Yeah. 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 So, so if, if people generally think this is interesting, um, I will open a ticket with the CNCF to have them help. Yeah. Chris, just, this said, uh, Chris just said CNCF can do that. Um, if you know we have Chris on the call, maybe we can discuss the Envoy certification thing as well. Well, do you quickly want to talk who put the C++17 thing in there? That was us. That was us. Oh. That's less pressing. Are you, are you already able to do C++17? No, that... but it's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's imminent, probably sometime in the next year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, realistically, it's probably a few months off. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... If we could actually move to 17, I'm not sure that we can, having access to standard file system would be pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think, I think if, if we are able to go to 17, the question then becomes uh, who else? And I think the survey is probably the best. Right. That question. Yeah, so I, my, my, my gut is that we probably, it would, like, I don't think we have enough information to, to go to 17 right now, um, but why don't we get the survey going and then let's just see what it says. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. This probably means we can remove all the string hacks because that's happening. Oh, oh, that's in the same, really? Yes. Wow, oh, that made me really that happy. Yeah, that's, that's they are linked. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We, we need to undo the string hacks before we can go to 17. It's like, oh, that's a strong prerequisite. Yeah, I thought they, well, they can do Yeah, that's pretty exciting. 
Wow, I, I will be happy to never have to think about that again. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies yeah. for organization. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I, I guess we do have Chris on the call. Could you, Chris, could you talk about uh, this, I don't know what, what you call it, conformance program, yeah, certification I mean, program? It's, it's kind of up to you. Uh, there's some folks that reached out that it could be interesting for as envoys being adopted by uh, different cloud providers and offering kind of, you know, envoys of service, you know, at mesh style uh, to have a conformance program in place to ensure that if people call it envoy, at least meets whatever your community standards are. Similar to what we did with Kubernetes, where uh, all the folks who have a Kubernetes service essentially have to go through a conformance program, pass the end-to-end -end tests, you know, determined by the community, and then they're able to uh, be granted to use the Kubernetes term. I don't know if envoy is there yet, but um, we're, we're happy to do something for you if you think uh, it's it's required at this point. Are you talking specifically about management servers here? Yeah, uh, manage Envoy. Um, uh, I don't think anyone's doing like distributions or anything like that yet, as far as um, as, as far as I know. For Kubernetes, we do both for managed service and and distribution. I don't really have any strong preference. I mean, if there is someone out there that wants to drive it, it sounds fine. Yeah. I mean, what I would probably tell, I guess, is writing a, a, a very comprehensive suite for management servers to validate their conformance, which would be only a good thing. Like it'll improve our range of uh, sort of tests that we have, have out there and um, sort of reduce the need to duplicate this each time someone wants to write a management server. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but someone's going to have to write those. We, we don't have anything close to that today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's not the most important kind of burning problem for folks, then uh, I'm not too worried about it. But as, as more, more, more of this comes up, people generally want to use the kind of envoy mark for things. Um, and right now we can allow that. So, you know, there's a reason it's AWS app mesh and not AWS managed envoy, whatever. So. Yeah. But uh, in, I think on the other side, um, for the from the distribution side, we have a lot of like Envoy-based solutions on that side as well. Like Easter Proxy is one, like Ambassador, and uh, like a couple of them are based on Envoy and how how much they are like aligned with upstream. Uh, if you use with the management server, can act like upstream Envoy does. Something like that is also a conformance test can do. Yeah, I don't know how many distributions are of Envoy are out there. Yeah. And maybe in the survey we could figure that out uh, and mm -hmm. kind of use that as data to yeah do this or not. Yeah. What what we should probably do is, and I'll I'll, I'll take this action item. I will start a Google Doc of survey questions, um, mm -hmm. and, and then maybe we can collaborate on what we want to ask obviously we shouldn't ask too many questions people won't answer them but mm -hmm. um but let's 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 try to have some type of usage survey and then we can go from there cool. yeah that sounds nice okay what's next um extra time seven minutes talk about rama's pr well, I, I guess, are, are there any other topics that people want to talk about before we talk about that? Um, actually, I just have a quick question about uh, the caching spec that we introduced a couple of weeks ago, where um, you know, we've gotten a lot of really good feedback on the doc, and I wonder if, like, is there a established process for kind of saying this is this proposal looks acceptable and we should start sending PRs that actually provide the infrastructure or should we do like formal review um, having had some comments again in this meeting what's the usual practice I don't I don't know that we have an official practice I I, I my my gut is that because this is an extension that doesn't really touch anything else, it, it's probably okay given the detail in the doc to, to start and just iterate. Um, that's, that's my personal opinion. I'm not sure if other folks have, have any different opinions. Uh, guys, I wanted to, uh, this is Edith from Solo. 
Can you hear me well? Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to, we built the envoy filter for caching and we would love to give it away to the community. Uh, and we have a, actually had a filter that maybe you will be interested in. So just let us know what we can do or how you can, we can help. We also have filter and transformation filter, conversation and other. So if you, we would like to work with you guys. Uh, great. Um, we, you and I have been uh, kind of uh, attempting to think up what's to do that right. next okay. week. I'm about to I'm about to head to California for a few days, but uh, uh, why, why don't we do that for next week? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. We both in Cambridge. It just makes a lot of sense. I was going to say, you all work in the same place. It should be very, very, <laughs> yeah. very, very easy. Yeah. Fantastic. Cool. Um, Sorry, yeah. I will say that we have quite a lot of customers, so we would love to share if you need any help about how people are running it with us. We would love to share that. Oh, uh, that'd be great. I'll set something up and also invite Todd, who's on the West Coast, to join us by video. Fantastic. Uh, any other items before we discuss the CDS update PR? Okay, so yeah, Matt. Um, well, okay, so let, let me just make sure that I understand the problem because it's possible that I don't, I don't even understand what's going on. Yeah. So the, the problem as I understand it is that Rama has a situation where, you know, they have some management servers that are coming up and down and a new management server comes up. It doesn't yet have all of the information. Um, so it goes and it responds to a CDS update with the clusters. And then Envoy asks the management server for all of the, all of the EDS updates. Uh, the management server doesn't know about some of the clusters, so it returns an empty update. Uh, and that causes the cluster to exit warming with no hosts. And the fix that Rama has proposed for that is that because in the XDS doc, there's a line that says that if, um, if an EDS response does not contain uh, a resource, Envoy is allowed to use the last known good resource of that type. So mm -hmm. he wrote some code that basically detects whether um, that case happened. So if the management server responded with some number of clusters, but not the one that was warming, and he detects that case, and if it's that case, then he copies the hosts from the old cluster to the new warming cluster. Is that like, am I even understanding the problem? Is that- Yeah, I think that's roughly right. I mean, I'd have to refresh myself on what, on, there's one detail there, which is what happens uh, on the EDS front, like Envoy. So when you, when you update a cluster, that shouldn't necessarily cause any activity to happen on the EDS front, unless it's like removing and adding a, a, a watch. That's probably what it's doing, which then causes um, some, some activity. Because remember, you basically always have a hanging uh, get on the on, on EDS at, at all times, right? So right. you can change uh, the resources that you're watching that the management service sees any activity or you're hacking something. Right, but my my concern here is that we're proposing putting a bunch, we're putting some very specific code into Envoy, which seems kind of scary to me. Which is that we're going to detect this case, and we're going to copy <clears throat> hosts from the old cluster to the new one. And yeah, so, 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 and, yeah. go ahead. Uh, well, right, I was going to say so. Just just by itself, that actually scares me because. Yeah. Like, do we know that the like the, the old hosts apply to the new host? That seems potentially not right. And two, and I'm I'm done. But like, I, it seems like it's a problem on the management server side, which is the management server is accepting connections before it's ready to actually serve them. So I, 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 yes, I I agree with the the last point, and I think there's two separate things to discuss. The first is, um, what are the what are the correct semantics here? And we can discuss that whether it's okay to you know keep the old EDS hosts. Um, and the other thing to think about is like what's the correct mechanism for implementing this? I kind of feel that the trend. I think it's kind of like hairy and complicated.
better to transfer hosts across. I agree. Yeah. Clusters. My suggestion in the original ticket was at the XDS level, we cache resources essentially, and we, we feed that we, we feed them back um, to to the new warming cluster uh, without actually doing any wire traffic. If that's what you want to do as your implementation mechanism, and that seems simpler to me. But but in in this particular case, I guess I still don't understand. Uh, let's say that you did the caching. How would you even detect the caching? Because if the cluster config changes, let's say someone changes some TLS setting or like something else, yes. how can you guarantee that that it's the same hosts? Like, I, I guess I, I just don't fundamentally don't understand how. So, 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 so the, okay, so the, now, now we're, getting, we, we're getting into the semantics. I mean, I think, you know, from a mechanism point of view, what you do is you just keep the last known um, set of hosts for that cluster and you feed it back um, uh, where when uh, it, it, the cluster comes back up and you know there's only been a, an update. So uh, I don't think that's the issue. So the issue is like, is it safe to feed to you to reuse the same hosts across a cluster update? And I think that the, the, a good example is switching from HTTP to HTTPS or back. And then it comes down to, I think, do you care about eventual consistency or strong consistency? Because if it's eventual consistency, the management server should be sending a host update anyway. <coughs> like it, just, it should be doing a push-based one. So let's right. say you switch from HTTP to HTTPS, you should get a CDS update. And then immediately after that, you should get um, a right. CDS update from the management server. And that will override anything that you've cached or served uh, uh, up, up in that way, right? Hey, sorry, we're getting kicked out of the room. I'm trying to go out in, into the hall. Yeah, <laughs> we'll probably get kicked out in a sec. Um, so I, I think this is a, we, we may want to actually have a separate meeting about this. Okay, um, um, why don't I, we, if it, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if you can carve out 15 or 20 minutes just to look through my comments um, and then let's discuss in GitHub. And then if we feel like we're not getting it anywhere in GitHub, I mean, we, we've got time zone issues with Rama, but let's find a time that all of us can actually meet. Because I, I think this is, I, I just don't want to jump into putting this code in because once it's in, it's a behavior that we can't take out ever. Sure. Right. I mean, what I would say is just, just the, my TLDR is, yes, I, I, I'm in total agreement that the management server could fix this problem. The second is I think we could do things slightly more elegantly uh, by not, you know, doing surgery in, in cluster manager. And the okay. final thing is what are, I think the crux of the issue comes down to is um, whether we care, uh, whether, whether we care about being able to make, like it's, 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 it goes like this early discussion we had around ADS about how concerned we are about, you know, reusing resources while updates are taking place and how important it is to guarantee consistency over certain windows and whether it really, it should be up to the user to do a proper make before break with it. Let's say different cluster resources versus um, trying to reuse the same names. So like, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of things in that discussion, which okay. I get clear. Okay, sounds yeah. good. So I, I, I guess let, let's just not jump into merging that PR. Um, okay. let's, let, let's make sure that we're doing our due diligence. Okay, Great. okay, sounds good. Thanks all. Okay, bye. bye. Um, I think